Hello and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. Gerd G. Fanauspensky offered compelling insights into the concept of self-observation, which, if utilized properly, could aid us in recognizing our unaccepting tendencies, thought patterns, attitudes, and behaviors. Why acceptance? But imagine a world where one is perpetually in conflict with what is, never at peace, always fighting the tide of reality. It's an exhausting existence. Acceptance does not mean resignation or capitulation, but it involves understanding that reality unfolds as it must, and our energy is best directed toward engaging with it in a manner that is both conscious and constructive. The first step towards this noble goal is to understand the nature of self-observation. Gerd Jeef and Auspensky proposed that we exist in a state of sleep, trapped in our own mechanical thoughts and reactions. Self-observation, they postulated, is a key to awakening from this somnambulant state. Self-observation means cultivating the habit of looking inwardly at our own inner life and our reactions to the events in our lives. Consider a moment when you reacted impulsively, maybe with anger or resentment. Now imagine that instead of reacting automatically, you paused and observed your internal state, you noted the welling of anger, the swell of resentment, and the way these emotions colored your thoughts. Perhaps you saw how these thoughts added fuel to your emotions. And perhaps you began realizing how you've reacted in a similar manner in the past. Maybe you could even see how there was some initial situation where you learned to respond in this manner, and what need you thought would be met through the response. Now, as with most valuable skills, self-observation is not easily mastered. You're not only attempting to break free from the current of habitual thought and behavior, but also learning to separate your observing self from your reactive self. In this last part it crucial. Because there is no point in confronting the thoughts directly. Instead, what you need to do is bringing as much awareness as possible into your present moment experience of them. When you do this, the thoughts will after a while seem less real. You will identify less and less with them, and thus they begin to change naturally. They may flare up from time to time, but when you don't go unconscious, you will be able to make the choice of whether you want to believe them or not, and you can start choosing to take the thoughts in a different direction. A simple, yet effective exercise, when you have a particular way of thinking about a certain type of situation, person or event, is to ask yourself whether it's necessarily true. This is particularly effective when it comes to value judgments. Let's say that you've deemed a person narcissistic and self-centered. Perhaps you go off on an inner monologue of how said person always has to make everything about him or herself. But can you be absolutely sure that you are correct about what drives said person's behavior? So, how can we use all of this knowledge to foster acceptance? Self-observation allows you to discern the mechanical nature of your non-accepting tendencies. You begin to see these patterns, not as an innate part of your character, but as automatic reactions that have been ingrained over time. This distance gives you the power to choose your response rather than being swept away by the unconscious tide of automatic reaction. We need to understand that these patterns, these habits of thought, have their roots in our experiences and conditioning. They were formed as adaptive strategies to navigate the world. However, what was once perhaps a necessary adaptation may no longer serve us and may indeed inhibit our ability to engage with the world in a meaningful way. Recognizing this fact is crucial for fostering acceptance. It's not about blaming oneself for having these patterns or striving to eradicate them immediately. That's merely a different form of non-acceptance. Instead, the goal is to bring these patterns into conscious awareness, to understand them, and to gently nudge ourselves towards more constructive responses. This is important. Meeting our non-acceptance with non-acceptance is also non-acceptance. Meeting resistance with resistance is also resistance. What you need to understand here is that conscious awareness and resistance cannot coexist. You must first go unconscious to start resisting. However, every moment is a choice between awareness and unconsciousness. If you haven't noticed this yet, you will when you practice self observation. Most people walk around in an unconscious state without knowing it. And even when we start noticing it and start to wake up, we slip in and out of consciousness all of the time. I still do it, even though I've been on this journey for quite some time. 
but something that I'm also beginning to notice is that awareness is effortless. The discomfort that we feel when we bring awareness into an uncomfortable experience, whether on the inside or the outside, is an illusion. We actually take the edge off of the experience when we bring awareness into it. But we need to start observing our natural tendency of going unconscious as soon as something triggers a negative emotional response. Our natural tendency to say to ourselves, this shouldn't be. Bear in mind that this is not a quick fix. It's a journey. The road to acceptance is long and requires patience. There will be times when you slip into old patterns, when you react without thinking. It's important to meet these moments, not with self-judgment or frustration, but with understanding and kindness. Remember, it's another opportunity for self-observation, another step on the path towards acceptance. It bears repeating, each moment is an opportunity to bring more consciousness into your experience. Every step you take, every observation you make, every pattern you identify and understand, brings you closer to what you seek, acceptance, and ultimately surrender. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please leave a like, as this helps the video to rank higher in search results. And feel free to share it on social media and other places. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel. I put up content every day, and I do my best to always offer something valuable. Also, check out the description and comment section for more things that me and my wife are doing. Thank you for your time.